There are only a few days left until Thanksgiving, so today I'm gonna share my top 10 easiest Thanksgiving desserts. Now, I'm excited because it is Thanksgiving. A lot of you have been asking for a countdown, so just so you know, there are only 11 weeks left until this little baby girl joins us. Now you guys loved my Thanksgiving side dishes, so I thought it'd be fun to make a roundup of my top 10 desserts. Now before you eat me alive, please note, they are not all pies. My kids actually don't love pies, and I like different desserts too on Thanksgiving. So there is a large array of desserts that work perfectly for Thanksgiving, and if you've only had pies for Thanksgiving, it's kind of fun to try something new. All right, if you're ready, let's just jump into the recipes. The first recipe I'm making today is called apple slab pie. I really love this recipe because it serves a lot of people and bakes on a cookie sheet. First, you're gonna start with some pre-made pie crust. You can make homemade, but we're all about easy. We are about easy. <laughs> so we're gonna do the pre-made. It comes with two pie crusts and that's what we wanna use. We're gonna use all of that. So we took it out of the refrigerator. You're gonna open it very carefully. I let it sit for about 20 minutes before I started rolling it out because if it's really cold, it's gonna break apart. Yeah. So a little flour, mix this around. Now, while I am rolling this out, do you wanna make the Spice the filling, yes. yes. So we have sliced up four Gala apples and four Granny Smith apples. So we have one cup of sugar and I'm just gonna add all the spices and things to the sugar and then we're gonna add it to the apples. So the first thing I'm gonna add is one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon to our sugar and then a fourth teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and a fourth teaspoon of allspice. I'm kind of give it a little mix. Okay, so to this sugar and spice mixture, I'm going to add three tablespoons of cornstarch. Now that sounds weird, but <laughs> I'm telling you, it tastes It's gonna make it all good. the flavor stick to the apples. Exactly. So that's what we want. Exactly. And then just three tablespoons of flour. So as we're mixing this around, we also want to add just some lemon juice to the apples just to keep them more fresh and it kind of gives it a good little flavor. So I'm gonna add one tablespoon of lemon juice just over the apples. And then we are going to add in our mixture to the apples. Now before you add that in, I'm just gonna jump over here really fast. So I rolled out one of the pie crusts and I'm just gonna put it on half of the cookie sheet. So we're gonna roll out the other one and put it on the other half. Okay, you keep mixing, Kay. just letting them know. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just gonna add this in to our apples now that it's all mixed together and just stir it together. It's already smelling like Thanksgiving in here. <laughs> all these spices. Smell that allspice and apples. I know, it smells so good. It does. Okay, so we'll just keep turning and mixing this till all the apples are coated with the mixture. We should have two people in the kitchen all the time. I know. It just needs to happen. For every Thanksgiving. I guess for Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. We can help each other. Okay, I'm gonna just carefully lift this up and put it on the other half. Now it's okay if they overlap, doesn't matter. So we are gonna just kind of just press them down. Really good, you can even get your roller, will it fit? Yes, it will. Nice. And just roll it together. So now that she's fully rolled these out and these are all, all the apples are mixed together, we're just gonna pour it right on top. And I think any apple would really work for this, don't right? you? I agree, I agree. I like how it's the color. I know, it's, it's mixed, pretty. Yeah, it's a pretty mixed fall well. mixture. Okay, so we'll just mix this around, to make it an even layer. Nice, while you're doing that, I'm gonna start folding in the crust a little bit. Okay. So just kind of just rolling the edges in. It doesn't have to be perfect, because, you know, it's on a cookie sheet, so yeah. meh. It's gonna be good enough. And you're gonna be cutting it up. And exactly. I love how you can just like make it work. If you do have extra, I mean, you could cut it off so it's even yeah. all around, but to be honest, people won't even know because nope. they, you are gonna be cutting it up into squares. Yeah. How's it looking? Good. Good. So we're gonna bake this at 425 degrees. We have the oven preheated and it's gonna cook for about 30 to 35 minutes just until the apples, you know, are soft, good apple pie yes. apples. So we pulled it out of the oven, we let it cool. We actually stuck it in the fridge for a little bit to let it really cool. Yes. Then we did a little bit of glaze on top, but we wanna show you how you make the glaze. Yeah. We'll just, we're gonna add a little more glaze on top. No one's one. gonna complain about more glaze, no. I promise you that. No. <laughs> so this is really easy. It's two ingredients. You're gonna add one cup of powdered sugar 
and then two tablespoons of milk. You can use any milk. And then you're just gonna whisk it together. It may take a little second. And that's literally it. You just whisk it together, drizzle it over your apple pie. Bon appetit. <laughs> the second recipe is called turkey cupcakes. This is perfect for kids who don't necessarily love pie. The first thing you're gonna do, again, we're all about easy. You can make your own homemade chocolate frosting, but you're, already, you're cooking today. for Thanksgiving. So you just buy the canned and it's still gonna taste good. So you right. can just frost your chocolate cupcakes. I guess you could do any flavor, but. Right. I like, I like, like our chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> mostly because turkeys are kind of, I don't know, our turkeys brown. <laughs> turkeys are brown today and it's fine. Yes. Okay. Then once it's frosted, we have brown sprinkles. You could use like an orange sprinkle or a white sprinkle, but are turkeys brown? I feel like turkeys are no. kind of brown. They're brown today. It's fine. They're actually kind of white, but <laughs> it's fine. Okay. They're like the feathers. Yeah. Feathers on the turkey. I love, I love this. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to make the turkey feathers. <laughs> so just kind of carefully stick your candy corns into your turkeys. And then you got to add your eyes to your turkey. So you can find these. These are just like on most baking aisles by the sprinkles. Yep. So we'll press those in and then you add your nose. So we do it with the white tip up. So press the yellow into your cupcake. And then the most important part is the wattle. Of <laughs> we did have to research that before. <laughs> So just the little red dangly thing. Yep, yep. I don't even know how to properly draw one, but I feel like that's it. Perfect. I like it a lot. <laughs> so these would be cute to put on a little plate on display by their food for Thanksgiving. The perfect Thanksgiving treat for kids. Number three is our simple pumpkin pie. Now, if you've always been intimidated making pie, this is the recipe to make. So I'm making my pumpkin pie filling and I've got a large glass bowl and the first ingredient is one 15 ounce can of pure pumpkin puree. The next ingredient is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now I'm adding one fourth cup of light brown sugar, two large eggs, as well as one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now for the spices, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Then I'm just gonna mix this together until everything is well combined and the filling is smooth. Now that our filling is done, we can pour it into our pie crust. I'm just using a nine inch store-bought pie crust, but if you have a homemade pie crust that you love, it would work great for this recipe. And then I just put the pie on a large baking sheet and I've cut a few strips of foil that I'm loosely covering the crust with. I don't want my crust to be burned, and so I put this on in the beginning to kind of cover it so it cooks a little slower than the rest of the pie, and then I'll take it off towards the end so the crust gets nice and golden. But you could put it on halfway through if you feel like your crust is too dark. Then you put it in the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes, then reduce the oven temperature to 350 and bake for 35 to 40 more minutes until it's done. Serve with a little whipped cream and enjoy. Number four is our Reese's fudge. Yes, I know fudge usually is around Christmas, but I love fudge for Thanksgiving. So you're gonna take a nine by nine square pan, line it with foil, and then spray it with non -cook cooking spray. Then you're gonna take your Reese's. I had a very good helper helping me today we're gonna do 16 on the bottom of the pan. Next, you're gonna take three cups of chocolate chips and then just dump them into a microwave safe bowl. Now you could do this on the stove top also, but I love using the microwave. Then you're gonna take one can of sweetened condensed milk and just pour it in over your chocolate chips. Then I like to microwave in 30 second increments and then stir in between each 30 seconds, then stick it right back in the microwave. Now once everything is melted, it's starting to get a little bit thick, this is how we like it. So now it's time to put it onto your Reese's. We're making the rest of the fudge. Go ahead and pour it on very gently. The Reese's might come up a little bit as you're spreading, so just try and hold them down as you spread. Now it's time for the topping, and of course it needs to be Reese's. So. I started out with 22 Reese's. I put 16 on the bottom and the rest I am just crumbling up and I'm pressing down into the fudge. So when it cools and hardens, 
the Reese's will be stuck in there. Now I let this sit in the fridge for about an hour and a half and it is hardened and ready to go. So I carefully pull away my foil and then you can cut right into it. Now I love this fudge because you don't need a candy thermometer and it actually keeps its shape pretty well. I also love that you can see the Reese's on the bottom and on the top. Now whenever I make this fudge, it is gone instantly. Number five, something fun to have on the table is our Robo Pretzel Bites. Now I would suggest getting smaller pretzels than I have here because the Rolo did not want to stay in the middle. So smaller pretzels is a must, but they still worked out. So you're gonna put a Rolo on each pretzel. Then you're gonna cook it in the oven at 350 degrees for about three minutes. The Rolos are going to be melty and all you have to do is put a pecan on top and you are done. Number six. Of course you need pumpkin at Thanksgiving. So this is our pumpkin sheet cake. It serves quite a bit. Let's get going. Let's do our pumpkin first, if that's okay. Okay. I just like to put it on the bottom. It just makes my life, <laughs> just makes my life a little bit easier. Okay, so, so the whole can? Yep, 15 ounces. And this is pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling. Yes. Okay, and because of Corona, pumpkin is a little hard to find, so. Yeah, and fall time. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you want pumpkin right now, go grab it while it's still available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we're just gonna add in four eggs. There we go, and then I'll let you add the others while I mix. Okay, so then we're going two, is this two cups of sugar? Two cups, yep. Yep. Now it sounds like a lot, but you got a lot of pumpkin in there, so yeah. you need some sweetness. And it's for a whole cake. Yes. So that's good. And then oil, we've just got one cup of vegetable oil yep. that we'll dump in there. Now you can put this in like your stand mixer, or, yeah. you know, but we're just doing it this way by hand because sometimes it's more fun that way. Right, we'll yeah. work out while you are go, getting ready. Go, go, <laughs> So now we've got to add some seasonings to it. We are going to do three teaspoons of cinnamon. So it seems like a lot, but remember this is a big cake. Yes. And then we're also gonna do one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So if you don't have pumpkin pie, pie spice, <laughs> you can add in a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cloves. Um, if you Google how to make your own pumpkin spice, pie spice, it's super easy. Yes. Okay, and then we've gotta add in some baking powder, some baking soda. So let's yep. see, baking powder, I've got two teaspoons. Nice. And then baking soda, we've got one teaspoon. And then just a little bit of salt, one teaspoon of salt. Nice. Okay, mix that in. And then our last one is the flour. I'll pass oh. it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm so gonna mix. It's just two cups of flour, which may, means this is gonna be a really moist cake. Nice. Which is what I like. Yeah. Almost, almost like fudgy, kind yeah. of. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. I love like the dense, Pumpkin. I don't know. It's just so good. Yes. All right, mixing this in. <laughs> you almost need a bigger bowl. I <laughs> probably do. Sorry, I'm getting flour all over you. Totally fine. Oop, and, and the floor. myself, and the floor, <laughs> and everything. Just gotta get those sides, there we go. That's how you know it's good. Maybe it's a sign I should use a mixer. It's fine. Okay. There okay, you go. break Looking your good. turn. Kay. Your turn. Kay. Muscles. Why are, you, why are you using your muscles? I am going to spray the pan with a nonstick cooking spray. You can butter it and flour it, but this is the lazy way, and I just love using pan. We were go. talking about before we started filming too. This is such a moist cake with a lot of. It's got the oil and the pumpkin, so it isn't going to be too sticky. So that's why you're okay to use pan. Yeah. And then dump it in there. Can you dump that. I'll grab a spoon to help Thank get you. the edges. You got that okay? Yeah. We'll lick out the rest of that later. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll do that off camera. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then I'm just gonna spread this around. It's not a very thick layer. No. But it will it cook will up. It will cook up. Yeah. Yep, it yeah. gets nice and puffy. I'm just gonna try and even it before I start spreading. How's it looking? You Perfect. Okay. Yep. You're okay. ready to bake. Yep. I feel good about it. Okay. Now that it's all spread and even, we're gonna cook it at 350 degrees for about what 20, 25 minutes? Yep. 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Perfect. 25 to 30. All right. So 
came out of the oven. We let it cool for like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. You don't want it really, really hot because your <laughs> frosting will melt. So you want it to cool pretty much all the way. Yeah. So now we're gonna make our delicious cream cheese frosting that will go on top, which this is what makes the recipe <laughs> amazing. You're a frosting I girl. also love frosting. Yes, Might be my favorite food. Yep. But, okay, let's, let's, <laughs> let's make some frosting. All right, so we're gonna start with a, a cup of butter or two sticks of butter. They're at least room temperature, maybe a little bit softer. Yes. So start with that. Okay, and you have a whole block or eight ounces of cream cheese. It is softened a little bit in there. Okay, there we go. Start mixing that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Now you don't want it melted because you want it a little bit thicker frosting. So as you are mixing that, I'm yep. gonna add in your um, vanilla. So like what? One teaspoon of vanilla? Two, ta two, teaspoons. two teaspoons of vanilla. Mm, I love vanilla. Okay. And then as you're mixing that, we'll just slowly add in powdered powder sugar. sugar. So it's about three cups. I'm gonna slowly add it. Okay, it is really thick. So we're just gonna add just a little bit of milk just to thin it out just a little bit. So I don't know, like fourth a cup or so? Yeah, two okay. tablespoons and then just kind of play with it, see what you need. Yeah. Kristen, do you want a beater? Yeah, you want me to lick that off for you? <laughs> Uh, when I cook it myself, I leave a ton of frosting on the beaters so I can <laughs> lick it. Mm -hmm. Her mom always used to let us lick the beaters. I know, it was my favorite. There we go. Gotta hit, hit the frosting off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if she goes and washes those, I'm gonna start putting the frosting on. Looks good, Kate. Oh man. <laughs> it's all Kristen it's, can do to I not know. lick this right now. Lick it, lick it. No, I'm fine. Okay, we are done with this one. Number seven is our M&M fudge. This only takes a few ingredients and it doesn't take long to put together. Now you're gonna be on low, medium heat. You are gonna add two cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips and then just one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk right on top. Now, as this starts to melt, you want to make sure that you keep stirring it because you don't want anything to burn onto the bottom of the stove top. Now, once it's all melted, you're going to go ahead and add three fourths cup of those little mini baking M&Ms and just mix them just until it's combined. No more than that. Then you're going to take a nine by nine pan, make sure it's covered with foil, spray some nonstick cooking spray on it, then go ahead and spread your fudge all along the bottom of the pan. Then you're gonna take the rest of your M&Ms and gently put them on top. Then you're gonna press down so as the fudge hardens, the M&Ms will stay in the fudge. Now I like to keep it in the fridge for about an hour or two, let, let it stiffen up and then go ahead and remove the foil. Gently cut into it and then you're going to have perfect fudge pieces. I like these because they stay in their shape. They're not really gooey, they are perfect every time. You don't have to use a candy thermometer. It really is the easiest fudge recipe. Number eight I'm making with my sisters. This is the Caramel Marshmallow Rice Krispies. All right, Camille is going to make this recipe for us today. Nope. Okay, so I've got a little saucepan and I'm gonna add some butter. It's pretty warm. You want this to be on low. Caramels are pretty finicky and you don't want them to burn. So keep it on low heat. Then I'm gonna add a whole can of sweet and condensed milk. Then just mix it all together. You're gonna wanna keep an eye on this because it will start to burn quickly. Okay, Lauren is now <laughs> trading places with Camille. She took over the caramel job. Yes, we car. are almost there. We're just waiting for the last few caramels to melt and then we're good to go. It took how many minutes or so do you think it took to? Probably mm -hmm. like six or seven minutes until it was all melted together. Okay. We kept it on a pretty low heat. Nice. Burns. Looks good. All right, should we skewer the marshmallows? Yes, let's do it. All right, time to skewer. So we have our little skewers. Have a little marshmallows, Laura, are you gonna help me? Yes. Let's do this. All right, ladies, let's see it done. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Camille. We're going full dunk. Ooh. Dip your mellow and then into just the plain Rice Krispies. Yep. The more the barrier. Right. Just gonna let it 
that rest. Yep. Now when you serve these, you're gonna take the skewer out, but right now we are using the skewer because it makes it a lot easier to dip. This is like the tip that Disneyland uses, right? I yeah. see the big skewers. <laughs> Number nine is one of my favorite ones. It's our no-bake caramel pecan turtle pumpkin pie. Now you can be really fancy and make your own graham cracker crust, but this is a game changer. Now on the bottom of our graham cracker crust, we're gonna add about a third cup of caramel. Can you see that? Yeah. And we're actually just going to pour it whoop, all over, pretty much until it is covered. Then I kind of just spread it around a little bit. Guys, that's gonna be amazing. Ooh, I'm excited. Next, I'm gonna take a half cup of pecans. Now it says chopped. These are still some bigger chunks because I like it that way on my turtle pie. So you're just gonna spread these into your caramel or caramel or whatever you wanna call it. Don't judge me, just know that's what it is. It still tastes the same. Next, we're gonna add two packages of vanilla pudding mix. So these are 3.4 ounces, so you're gonna add two of these. So it'll be just over like 6.8 ounces. Then you're gonna add one cup of milk to the pudding. Then just go ahead, mix this all together. It's gonna be thick, that's how we want it. Then you're just gonna add one cup of pumpkin puree and we're just gonna mix this all together. Okay, this is pretty mixed. Now we're just gonna add about one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of nutmeg. We're just gonna add some flavor to this. Mix it all together. Then you're just gonna slowly put this on. Now the caramel is really loose and soft, so you kinda wanna do it in chunks so it will be easier to spread. All right, then we're gonna put about a cup and a half or so <laughs> of Cool Whip on or whipped cream, whatever you like. I love Cool Whip. That's my favorite thing. You're just gonna gently spread this all over the top. All right, so then we're just gonna put this little lid on, then we're gonna refrigerate it for two hours. We want everything to just combine together. All right, let's cut into this. Oh man, I'm so excited. Oh, that thing is thick. Oh, can you see that? That looks so good. So now we're just gonna add a little more pecans on top. If you like those, no pressure. If you don't, you don't have to add the little extras. And then I like to add just a little bit more caramel. And the last one, number 10, is our Lunch Lady Peanut Butter Bars. So you're gonna add one cup of butter to a microwave safe bowl, and then we're just gonna throw this into the microwave until it's softened. So when it's all nice and softened, just dump it into your mixing bowl. Then you just need one cup of sugar and one cup of brown sugar. Make sure you press that down. Next, you're gonna crack two eggs and also put it right in. On top of that, add one teaspoon of vanilla. And go ahead and mix that together. Looking good. So this recipe calls for two and a half cups of peanut butter. Sometimes it's hard to put it into a measuring cup, so I kind of just eyeball. So right now we're just doing one cup. We're gonna save the cup and a half for later. So next we're adding two cups of oats. And on top of that, two cups of flour. And last, you're gonna add just one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. And mix it all together. Next, you're gonna take a cookie sheet and spray it with cooking spray. And I'm just gonna take the dough and I like to put it right in the middle. Okay, the trick when you're making peanut butter bars is that you don't want to push the dough all the way to the sides. You want to leave a good inch on each side because it will expand and grow. And so then you won't have the crazy crust. It will all be even. Okay, they're all ready. We're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Okay, so it just came out of the oven. Now you're gonna add just little tablespoons all over the peanut butter bars while they're still really hot. Okay, we're gonna let it sit just like this for about two minutes or so, let the peanut butter melt, then we're gonna spread it all around. 
Okay, we're all done here. We're gonna set it aside and make the frosting. So this frosting recipe is my mom's homemade frosting. So it's not exactly like the peanut butter bars you had growing up, but I'm telling you, it makes it even better using this recipe. So we're gonna start by adding a half cup of butter just right into the bowl. Now this is really softened. Then we're gonna add just about a fourth cup of milk. On top of that, we're gonna add three cups of powdered sugar. Perfect. On top of that, one teaspoon of vanilla and four tablespoons of cocoa. Then beat it all together. And just spread it carefully out. Now hopefully your week won't be too stressful. This week has actually been pretty crazy for us. We've had a lot of sickness, including strep. And then Sarah came out of her room saying, Mom, I'm a mermaid. There are no words. There are no words. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. If you need some side dish ideas, I've got some good ones right up there. I'll see you next time. Bye.